guess what happens is it saves it in a different type of format that uses a lot less, mm -hmm. um, uh, what is the word, uh, memory. So, so right a, now, the picture to the right is what's on the screen. Should be, right? Yes, it is. Yeah, that's, so that's the live feed part. Now, we want to start her music, which mm -hmm. is right there in 10 seconds. We're going to start the music. So to do that, you click on DVR. Welcome back. This is Joni Lane. I'm your host today for A Positive Light. A Positive Light is a nonprofit meditation center in Kelseyville, California. And we um, hold classes and are open for other teachers to hold classes as well. Um, my information will be posted up on the screen to, throughout um, my talk today. So you can see my phone number, my website, and my email. I'd appreciate it if you have any, any questions at all or comments or suggestions that you email me and let me know what they are. If you'd like to be a guest on the show, I would love to hear from you. Again, email me or give me a call. You can check out the current classes that we hold by visiting um, positivelight.com. And we have a calendar site with everything that's currently scheduled. Things change on our schedule. We do hold Monday night meditations every week at 7 o'clock. Um, and the last Friday of every month, we have a Reiki healing circle. Things are added to that throughout the month, and the calendar is updated when that happens. But I do want to hear from you because I want to hear your ideas and your suggestions. And again, if you're a teacher or if you know of one that has a positive message to share, I'd like you to contact me to either hold a class at the center or be a guest here on my show. I do have guests on the show often, and if you have a positive message, again, I'd love to have you on the show as a guest. So contact me on that. You were listening to the music by Sam Houston. That's E-U-S-T-O-N. It's called Beyond the Crescent Moon. It's his own original music. It's beautiful music, and I highly recommend looking at his website, samhouston.com, and checking out that CD. 
I think it's um, perfect meditation music. I also use it in my Reiki courses and during my Reiki circles. Um, very po powerful music by a very talented man. So I highly recommend you check that out. I have a CD of it right here. And I'll be playing that at break and at the end of the show as well. So I was talking a little bit about what we do at the center. Um, we are a nonprofit. We run on donations. All fees for the classes are donations to help the classes continue to run. They keep the doors open. They keep the grounds working. Um, they have upkeep on the buildings. Everything that we need is all provided by the donations, and all donations go to providing for the center, as well as keeping up the grounds and the buildings. We also have a few projects that we're working on. Um, one of them is a youth jam promoting music in youth. The schools, recently a lot of the music classes have been cut because of funds, and I really am upset about that because Music is a part of development, especially in younger children throughout teenage years, that helps the development of the brain. And in the long, in the long term can help the brain develop to understand math and science skills more thoroughly. It also helps with language skills and learning how to be ab abstract in your thinking and thinking outside the box. So. Music and all of the arts are very important to the development of children, and I like to promote that. So the nonprofit is working on projects in that department, and if you'd like to make some donations toward that, we can put money specifically in a fund specifically for those things. And you can find the donation information on the website as well. So think about helping us with that. It would be a really big help to our community here, and not only in this community, but you know when you help one person, you help another person that helps another person, and so on. Making the world a better place one person at a time sounds like it's going to take a long time, but you'd be surprised how quickly we talk to each other and spread kindness. So donations really help that. Um, the Monday night meditations at 7 o'clock at the center, we usually begin with mindfulness meditation. And mindfulness meditation, I'm sure you heard quite about, a bit about it. It's, it's many things. Being mindful of your speech, being mindful of how you listen, being mindful of how you do the dishes, being mindful how you drive, how you walk, being mindful of your breath. Just doing everyday things and being mindful of them helps you be in the moment. And we only have this moment, and this moment, and this moment. We can't worry about the future because it's not here yet. And we can't change the past, but we can learn from the past. And we can make this moment better. And in doing so, when you make this moment better from the things you've learned in the past, you're making your future better. So you're laying out your future one moment at a time. If you, are, if you are living each moment in the most positive way you can, you are providing a positive future for yourself. And if you think about that, that's pretty powerful. Now, m mindfulness meditation, if you're actually taking a few minutes every day and just being in the moment of breath, being in your body, and perhaps you're using 10 minutes to just sit and listen to yourself, breathe, your heart beat, really experiencing being in your body, being in this life. You can let go of the stresses that you don't even know you're carrying out of habit. Most of us carry the same stresses every day, and they become so habitual, they become such a part of our life that we don't even know we're carrying them. Becoming mindful of how you're thinking, how you're feeling physically, emotionally, spiritually. Getting in touch with those things. You can identify the feelings and identify the thoughts and identify the stressors. And once you identify them, you can let them go and go back to your breath, go back to your body, 
And in doing that, you are retraining your habit. So instead of habitually being stressed by things that we come into contact with every day, we're learning how to be in this moment, be in our bodies, being in ourselves in an authentic way without the world changing us. We're all going to change a little bit as we grow because part of life is learning, learning from our past, learning from our mistakes, learning what we can do to be better people and better to others. This sets up new habits, new ways of thinking. And the more habitually you can think positively about yourself in every moment, the more you can show other people by your actions how they too can become better people. And it sounds a little idealistic and it sounds almost like fantasy, like something that really can't be attained. But in mindfulness, you really can attain it, and you can become happy. Happiness is such a general term when we all think about it. The Dalai Lama says the meaning of life is to be happy. That's very easy to say. It's very difficult to do. The world is a scary place. There are things that happen that we can't help but be unhappy about. But when things happen, and we're mindful of how we're acting and feeling, we do have the power to make choices in changing our thought patterns. And when we change our thought patterns, we can change the neural pathways in our brain. Neural pathways are actually roadways. It's like a road map in our brain. As we grow up from children, we create roadways in how we think. Our parents have taught us this is right, this is wrong, you should do this, you shouldn't do this. These are all habitual patterns of behavior. And the more the patterns are created in our brain, the more deeply they are engraved. There's actual pathways from one connector in the brain to another. These are called neural pathways. When people say, I'm taking the course of least resistance, it's a great way to describe neural pathways. It's how we think without even being aware of how we think. We can consciously change the neural pathways. Now, part of addiction is cyclical thinking, and cyclical thinking is going along these neural pathways. If we learn to behave in a certain way, we are following the path of least resistance. This pathway is a deeply traveled path. Our, the road has actually got a ditch in it from driving along that ditch for so long. It's gotten deeper and deeper, very deep neural pathway. It's so hard to break addictions. Now, addictions can be anything as long as they are not positive to our lives and they are cyclical thinking, they're not healthy and they're keeping us unhappy. So in order to change that, it takes some effort and consciousness, being mindful of our thoughts, we can change them by being aware of our, of our behaviors, identifying them, and consciously making a different pathway. It takes a little bit of work, and I teach these courses at my center. And if you're interested in some happiness classes, I do hold them. I would love to hear from you to let me know you're interested, and I'll set up a class. It's a fascinating class, and it's a lot of fun. We do a lot of fun things. We don't take it too seriously because life is supposed to be fun, and we practice having fun in the class. Kind of like getting in touch with your child again, the person you really are inside, that authentic person who really likes to have a good time. But society tells us to be serious. And that takes a lot of the fun out of life. So consider taking a happiness class. They are really a lot of fun. Another thing that we have at the center is I'm a Reiki master teacher, and I teach Reiki. Reiki works on intention. Um, the word Reiki is Japanese. I teach the Usai method of Reiki. And... Um, Dr. Usoi was a Japanese monk 
um, in about the nineteen, the turn of the nineteenth century, I think he was born in eighteen sixty five. Um, so right before the turn of the century, he was doing um, a retreat on a mountaintop for twenty one days. It was a fasting retreat, and he became aware of Reiki symbols. They were uh, flashed to him. Now this is a very condensed version of the story, but during his meditations he saw the Reiki symbols, he received messages on what that meant, and he experienced tremendous energy. And in this energy, he felt positive energy pulsing through his body, and he realized it was a healing energy. Um, at one point on his travel back home, he stubbed his toe, grabbed his toe with his hands, healed his toe, and realized this tremendous energy is more than he thought it was. So the classes that I teach are level one, level two, master and teacher courses. And what I do is during the first course, um, the level one course, is I teach what Reiki is, what the history of it is, how it's taught, how it's been taught historically. There is an actual history and bloodline. And it's, an, it's, it's a fascinating thing because once you learn Reiki, once it's been explained to you, once you start using the hand positions that you'll learn in the first course, you'll realize how powerful it is. And you will want to keep doing it because the changes you see are instant. The changes you feel happen. The next day is, an, is a completely different day. After you've learned Reiki, you will never be the same. You will always have a positive system to go to. It affects your entire life, and it affects everyone around you. So consider taking some Reiki courses. Um, level two, we learn the symbols, what they mean and how they work. And this is even more powerful because we're using Reiki on each other and feeling the different powers of Reiki intention through different people. And it's very difficult to explain. It's a lot easier to understand when you're doing it. But once you see that you can move energy through intention and heal through intention on a cellular level, you'll be amazed and you'll, you won't want to stop doing it. Which is why I hold the last Friday of the month, I hold the Reiki Healing Circles where I give Reiki to a group of people. And every time the class is over with, those same people get up and go sign up for the next class because they're so in love with the feeling that Reiki gives them. It's such, such a positive, wonderful feeling. It's difficult to describe. I'd love to add another class, so if you're interested in that, let me know. I would love to share it with you. The, we do ask a $10 donation for that. It's a two-hour class, so $10 is pretty reasonable, and that money does go to keep the center open and to pay for the classroom. Um... All of these things, the mindfulness that we teach, um, the Reiki classes that we teach, these can all be added to your course in daily happiness. And what I can do for you is I can set you up with your individual course that you will take by yourself every morning for 10 minutes. And what I'll do is I will teach you some basics on how to start your day with a positive attitude letting go of stress, even though you may have some stress that you need to deal with that day, how to approach it in a more positive way. Um, very simple things. Ten minutes tops. Probably less time than that. But the, thing, the changes you'll see in your life will be tremendous. You will see huge changes. So I would love to hear from you because I love to give that to you. And most of the classes I teach are gifts. I give those to you. I don't ask for payment. I don't, I'm not in it for the money. I am in it to help you feel better. My true intention is to help you be happy. Because in helping you be happy, you can help others be happy. And the world will be a better place. So I know it's hard to believe, but I really don't want money for it. Donations go to the buildings. And I enjoy giving you these gifts. 
So I'd love to hear from you again if you wanted to email me or call me or just check out the website and see how you feel about it. If you have any comments or questions, let me know. I would love to answer them if I can. And you know, if I can't answer them, I will try my best to find an answer for them because I don't know everything and I'm happy to admit that. <laughs> I know a lot of people like to say they know everything, but I clearly don't. And I freely admit it. I try to be an authentic person and I don't want to put on airs, but I really do care about you and I would like to provide you with the best that I can. Another thing that I'd like to offer or at least talk about is EFT, which is Emotional Freedom Technique or often known as tapping. And there are um, acupressure points, thousands of them, all over our bodies. And by tapping these centers in a specific way and saying positive affirmations, you can change your moods, you can change physical health, you can change um, headaches. You, it's an amazingly powerful tool. I like to teach that too. I would like to start incorporating that into the happiness classes. So what I would plan on doing is doing mindfulness along with some Reiki, along with some tapping, and adding that all together and teaching people how to use those tools every day for 10 minutes or less to make a big difference in their lives. Some things to think about. Um, Again, I'd like to remind you that the music you heard today was by Sam Houston. And I keep repeating this because he really is an ama amazing artist. He is a musician that works on intuition. He hears the music in his mind as he meditates, and he puts it through instruments and records it. He's an amazing talent. And I'd really like to share that with you. So again, if you can go to his website, Sam Houston, e -U -S -T -O -N com, and check that out, I think you'd really enjoy his music. Um, we're going to take a couple of minutes now and take a break and let you listen to some of that music. And then I'll be back in about five minutes. Thank you.
Hi, and welcome back to A Positive Light. I'm your host, Joni Lane. Thank you for joining us today. And thank you for LCM TV for having us. We love it here, and we're really happy to have this show. I hope that you get something out of the show. It's my intention to try to give you some tools to make your life a little happier. Suggestions on things you can do every day. Little things that you can do every day in your lifetime. Whether it's going to the store and dealing with people in lines. Um, pumping gas at the gas station. Going to work and dealing with your coworkers. These are all stressful things. And we also have home lives. We go home and many of us have children and, and partners that we live with. And some of us live alone. Each lifestyle has its own challenge. And each lifestyle, um, no matter where you are, you're living in this world. And this world can be a stressful place. Um, a lot of people that you may know just seem really happy all the time. And I want to talk a little bit about that. A lot of people really are happy all the time, or at least most of the time. They have a different outlook on life. They tend to look at life as a challenge instead of a detriment when things happen. Um, the perfect example of that is depression. Many celebrities that you may have recently heard of uh, suffered depression to where they really couldn't deal with it anymore and ended their lives. People do this every day in society, and we don't hear about it because they're not famous. But it's a real struggle, and I've often noticed that some people who seem very happy are putting up a front because that's how they know how to get through life. It tends to ward off the evil, so to speak. Um, there's other people who are very open about how depressed they are, and we Often we'll label them with names and call them drama queens or, you know, not the best things to call people that are obviously upset. I think sometimes when we see somebody that is difficult for us to understand why they're behaving the way they are, whether they're behaving in an angry way or afraid or sad, it makes us uncomfortable because we don't really know how to handle it ourselves. We really don't know what to do for them. But a lot of times, they don't know what to do. And that's why they're acting that way. I would suggest looking past that behavior for a minute. And just taking yourself out of the emotional equation for a second. And looking deeply into that person and thinking, why are they acting that way? What could I say or do for them that might help them realize that people care, that someone cares? Now, there's a big difference between helping someone and becoming codependent to them and pointing out suggestions to them of how they may want to look at life differently or some actions they may want to take in their life to change things. But that doesn't mean we have to take care of them. The first thing you need to do is take care of yourself. We all have issues, like I said. We all have days where it's very difficult to get through them. Most of the time, life's pretty good. And most of the people we meet are pretty good. But we have those days where the cloud just seems to hang over us, and it makes it a little difficult to get through. <clears throat> if you're living in depression, you carry this cloud with you everywhere you go. And you can be in the happiest situation. <clears throat> you could be celebrating somebody's birthday, listening to music, being people with people you love, and you still feel really depressed. This is clinical depression, and you, the person does not have any control over it. It's a chemical imbalance in the brain. It's often caused by trauma, or it can be caused by neural pathways that we follow in our brain. Scientific facts have been proven that when we suffer trauma, whether it's fear or physical, we hold that in our, our brain stem. So it becomes a physical action that creates chemicals in our brain that cause us to feel depressed. It's very convoluted. It's very difficult to explain. But to simplify it a little bit, 
Think of an animal that's been in a cage and tormented and poked with sticks. That animal, if you let them out, is going to run and hide. They don't know who's out there and when they're going to get poked with a stick again. And if you show them a cage, they will probably run in the other direction really quickly. This is animal behavior, and it is instinctual. If someone has had a physical trauma or been physically attacked and brutalized, their brain stem absorbs that, and it becomes part of their animal instinct to react. There really is no conscious behavior choices. You just react. And in that, when it becomes physically embedded into your brain stem, those chemicals are filtered through your brain because of the animal instinct. This is a really big thing to understand. It's a really big deal because often people will say, well, why don't you just cheer up or why don't you snap out of it? It's not that simple. When you're dealing with something that's embedded in your brain stem, you're talking about something that's very serious. So there's very serious steps you might want to take. If you feel that you're one of these people that just can't snap out of being sad and you just can't snap out of being depressed to the point where you're actually questioning whether you should live or not, this is a time when you need to go seek help from a professional that knows about trauma that's been embedded into your brainstem. Psychotherapists are very educated in this field lately. There are all kinds of new studies that can be um, told to you so that you understand what's going on with your body and you understand what's going on with your brain chemistry. That alone can make you feel a lot better. There are drugs that you can take prescription drugs that you can take. Um, I don't see any reason you shouldn't take them, but if you don't want to, there are other ways that you might be able to deal with it too. My first suggestion is always seek professional help because they are professionals. They do keep up on the studies. The new studies that are coming out have a, so much information in, that they had no idea of before. Um, the other thing you may want to talk to these professionals about is taking some meditation classes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Meditation classes can help you calm your mind, calm your physical system down so that you're not so reactive. And if you're not so reactive to society, you won't have surges of chemical imbalance in your brain as often. So before you even try to approach taking mindfulness courses, if you feel that you are suffering with this kind of depression, seek out medical advice from a professional psychotherapist and a psychiatrist and see if they might suggest taking mindfulness courses. There's been huge studies and breakthroughs with mindfulness that's really helped a lot of people with clinical depression. So that's my suggestion for the week. If you feel that you're really in, in danger of hurting yourself or if you really feel that you are questioning whether life is something you want to continue with, please seek help. If you don't know how to do that, you can email me and I will try to find you help. But what I suggest you do is look in the phone book, go online, find somebody near you and just talk to them. And talk to them about taking some medications that might help and also mindfulness courses. And in this country, there are mindfulness classes pretty much everywhere. It doesn't have to be from me, and I don't need to be your only teacher. I suggest you look at what your heart tells you. Where do you feel comfortable? If you walk into a meditation center and you feel at home, great. But if you don't, look for another one. There are everywhere. I live in California. There's many of them here, but I also know there are many throughout the country. So something to think about. Take care of yourself. There's a lot more people that love you than you realize they do. But learning to love yourself is really one of the hardest things there is to do. There's some steps that make it a lot easier. And one of them in my, is mindfulness. So think about that. In the meantime, just know that I really do care about you. And I know that you're not sitting in front of me. And I know that you don't know me personally. And that's okay. 
But I can guarantee you, if I talked to you today, and I met you, and we had a conversation, I would like you. There is something to like in everyone, and a lot of people bury it really deeply. But if you look deeply, you can find it. So I want you to know that I care. And if you want to care about yourself a little bit more, look into taking care of yourself a little bit more by taking some mindfulness classes or reading a book, just doing some meditation every day. A couple of things to do. <clears throat> I'm going to thank L LCM TV again for having me again this week. I'm going to be doing this every Monday at 3 o'clock here on LCM TV. This is a positive light, and I'm Joni Lane, your host. I run a nonprofit called A Positive Light Meditation Center, and the website is apositivelight.com. Very simple. I'm going to leave you with some more songs from Sam Houston on his Beyond the Crescent Moon album. And thanks again for having us. Oh, one more thing before I go. My, we, uh, my uh, guest next week is Joanne Sakata, and she is an um, author of a mindfulness book. So you may want to tune in then. Thanks so much. Take care of yourself.